plus. No, no, he will be. He'll be an upgrade. Okay. He he will be. Thank you, James. I really appreciate that. That's really cool. Let me bring Gary Cobb in here. And Cobb, appreciate you doing this. By the way, in honor of G Cobb, Stanford High. Oh, yeah. you doing? Look at that. That's a night right there. That's See? right. That's right. Hey, right here. Yeah. G Cobb was coming up, and I go, let me get, let me get a let me get a black knight here for him, man. That's right. That's That's right. right. Oh, there you go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, word is coming out of the Novacare Center that it's Vic Fangio that's how about this? He's not in control of the Reddick scenario, but he's he's not a fan. And as you know, and I tried explaining this to somebody. You could be a great player at a place, Gary, but if a guy comes in and sometimes looks at your skill set and doesn't think it fits the style of defense that you're – no matter what you say or do, mm -hmm. that guy's looking for something different. And that's why they went out and got Bryce Huff. I mean, it's the same skill set kind of guy, and it's Vic who is saying, you know what, we can, we can, we can live without him. What's your take on that? Well, you know, I'm I'm uh I'm a little troubled by that because you know, uh Hassan Reddy gets to the quarterback. I mean, I don't really, you know, I mean, they snap the ball, there's a guy blocking him, he gets by him and gets to the quarterback. You know, now you're talking about I guess um you know, uh running right at him, let's say, you know, uh he's not a big guy and everything, but from the um, – when I think about the, their run defense, you know, he wasn't great, but, you know, the, they weren't great against the run. I mean, so um, I didn't see a problem with Hassan Reddick. Uh, I thought he – you know, when he does come around the corner, I mean, he he, uh, he does a great job because of his combination of speed and power, you know, that he is uh, stronger than he looks. and the guy is quick. He gets off on the ball. He has good technique. He comes Successful. in and gets low. Those guys don't like guys getting low like that. You know, you got those big offensive tackles. They don't like that. Wherever he goes, I mean, he wasn't here his whole career. He got sacked. I mean, and he gets to the quarterback, and he's disruptive. So I don't see why you say, well, I don't like him. And, and then the, the kid you bring in, what? Come on. You gonna tell me he's better against the run? No. This kid came off the field. They didn't even let him play against the run. So how, how are you gonna say he's better against the run than Hassan Reddick? I, I don't see. But I, you know, I I don't have any problem with Hassan. And really, um, you know, he's not terrible against the run where he just, um, I mean, you know, he hasn't been perfect and everything. But at the same time. He's a guy that uh, I've seen him fight guys and, and make plays on, against runs and stuff. He's he doesn't just give give it up. So, you know, I didn't have a problem with him. And I don't like I said, I don't see how you can bring in this kid who I've seen play. Who they they go, oh, it's a running play. We take him off the field. He only he only has played a certain number of plays. He wasn't a starter in New York. That's right. He wasn't a starter. So, I don't see how you complain about Hassan Reddick. His uh, run defense, and you bring this kid in here. But, uh, you know, I, I like Hassan. I don't see – what's the problem? You snap the ball, he gets to the quarterback. How about you know, that? Uh, that's something that in this league is very, very important. How about this, Gary? How would you feel as a player? If, and now, now, tell me if you – what what how he's trying to do here. So you tell the player, hey, go out and look automatically that drives the stock down of your player and the value mm -hmm. of your player. When you got another team going, Hey, the first day of free agency, as you just said, Gary, they signed a guy that duplicates him that yeah. drives it down more. And then they pay that kid more and mm -hmm. you do this. Okay. Well, why are they trying to drive my value down? If they want to trade me, wouldn't you try to keep most of that stuff private and not public? So if you're Hassan Reddick, 
do you take this stuff personal now that the Eagles I mean, are – I mean, it just seems everything they're doing and not saying, but everything they're doing, they're like trying to devalue the market for him and drive the market down. Now, do they want him back or not? I'm not mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not understanding. You've been around Howie a lot longer than me. How how do you read what they're doing here? I, you know, I it, it's really something that it's um, – I, I definitely, if I was Hassan, I would be scratching my head. I mean, I don't, I can't see, you know, I was shocked, you know, that they, when they did it, where they say, you okay, you go out and you see what you can get. And then, you know, they sign, uh, you know, oh. a kid from the Jets, but, you know, Hassan really, you know, yeah, they fell apart there at the end of the season. Yeah, before, they almost win the Super Bowl, okay? Then the year after that, there are a lot of guys on the team have major fall-offs. Hassan Reddick was one of the guys that didn't have as much of a fall-off, you know? So I could see him scratching his head and wondering, you know, uh, what is going on. And, you know, I um, uh, really with, um, with Sweat, I wasn't as surprised because he had a major drop-off. He did. You know, but... I didn't think they were going to be doing it, Hassan Reddick. You know, were they crazy about, you know, giving him a raise and everything? No, they're not crazy about that part of it. But, I mean, he's been a consistent player. He's been um, a guy who's been consistently giving pressure coming off the corner. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a positive guy. He's good. You know, see all, the, all his teammates like him. And so, I you know, I, I was really kind of surprised by that. but. You know, when I look at it, I, I understand them being frustrated with the way the season ended last year. I understand all of that. But I was surprised they target him. And, you know, for Vic Fangio, I don't see why he would signal out Hassan Reddick and say, well, he's a guy that wouldn't fit, fit my system and everything. I, I don't get that. Absolutely. I mean, it, it just it, it just it, it blows my mind that they're in that position. Um, uh, what they're saying there, by the way, James, after uh, Gary Cobb, I'll get to your super chat there here in a second. I want to throw this at you here. You tell me what you think of this so far. Now I said this about how in a probably overcooking it. When I say this, if you want to build a practice squad, boy, I'll tell you what, Gary, you hire Howie, because if you want a practice squad built, let me give you some of these names here. Yeah. Will Greer. There's more, there's more quarterbacks that are now on the roster than there's linebackers. Yeah. He's a journeyman quarterback. Okay. <laughs> Devin White. Here's a guy that was a bust in Tampa. Gardner Johnson, upgrade. Barkley, underachieved in New York. We'll find out if it was New York or if it was Barkley mm -hmm. this year with a better team. Yep. Fair enough. Yep. Bryce Huff, like you just said. He wasn't even a starter in New York. Devontae Parker, who? Matt Hennessy, a failure in Atlanta. They let him walk out the building. Kenny Pickett, talk shit to Mike Tomlin a couple weeks ago. He goes, hey, you see what he said to him? Mike Tomlin goes like this. He goes, hey, I think it'd be better if I had a better scenery. Mike Tomlin goes like this. Hang on. Next day he was traded. I'm like, hey, you ain't doing that to Mike Tomlin. He goes, okay, hang on. Next day, he's traded to the Eagles. Yeah. Gary, I, I look at some of these moves here, and I'm going like, okay, I mean, they just look like mid-level moves, except for the Barkley and potentially Huff and, and, yeah. and Gardner. Mm -hmm. But the rest of these moves, don't they look to you like they're mid-level moves? Well, I think they are. Um... I could see where uh, they are, you know, they're taking chances on some of these guys, you know, um, you know, they, they've had some success with some of these guys. I mean, like, uh, you know, if you look at some of the guys that they, um, they wound up benefiting from, like, you know, even though Bradbury, um, he went soft last year, you know, earlier than that, he'd had some pretty good season and, you know, he was a guy they had picked up. Uh, you know, Slay was had come in as a pro bowler and he, he's kind of stepped up. He's he's played um 
at that level. Uh, at the at the linebacker position, I think that they have, um, you know, they miss they missed last year, but earlier they had done all right there. But I think Howie he, he um some of these guys he's gambling on. There's no question about it. You know, he's trying to see, and hopefully he's. Uh, you know, from whatever advice I guess he's getting from the people that are going out taking a look at some of these guys, that he's planning on, you know, where he's he's going to get a guy that's somewhat of a surprise. Uh, that's what you got to think. I'm now Devin White. See now, I think with Devin White, Devin White, I think can be a good football player for you, but you got to protect him. You know, and I I played on defenses where I've seen, you know, uh, guys who were protected, meaning that. He's got those defensive linemen in front of him. He can give them a call and make the guy stunt, see? And the guy stunts, you know, and he does a slant inside or wherever he's from. Let's say he's outside shade of, of the guard and, um, you know, and, and uh, uh, White is behind him. Anyway, by him slanting and um, the, the, uh, the, the offensive line doesn't know where White is going to be, He's able to use his speed and quickness to make plays. Now, that, Gary, you know what someone said? That's to your point here? Yeah. Someone said this. If you want to put these guys in protection, like Dean, and tell me if you would subscribe to this. If you want to protect mm -hmm. Dean and, and White, yeah, put them, on, uh, put them on shades on the guards on the yep. outside, which means you're putting more pressure on your two DTs up front uh -huh. where you've got more invested – is that kind of what you're talking about? Kind of like yeah, yeah, but, making but them, see, instead of taking these guards head up, which they're not the best on taking on these guys head up, you're saying what? do something like that where Vic can slide these guys, yeah. maybe the strong side and weak side, right? And that's make them saying. one gap guys at that backer position. That, that's that's what I'm saying that you do. And if you uh, stunt your the guys in front of him, if you give him you know, where he can give this guy a call to know – Let's say he goes, you know, the, the, the defensive tackle goes inside. He steps outside. You're not sure where he's at. So a lot of times the offensive lineman, he doesn't know, you know, and he gets stunts and, and uh, it's, it's hard to catch a guy that's with speed, you know, and that's the thing White has is he does have quickness, but he's undersized. And so I would, I would, if, if I, if I were uh, running the defense, I would give him chances to give calls to the defensive line to have them move at times in order to keep the offensive line guessing. And if he goes in, makes a big play and everything right away, you know, that, that line go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we got to be careful about this guy. See, and, and, and you slow down the line and that way they're not able to just blow off because what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, we're running the ball right at him. Come on. Such, such fire right off at white. We're going to blow his butt off the ball and we're running right at him. We got him circled. In fact, we're going to come up and, and we're going to say uh, check with me at the line and let the quarterback call the play at the line of scrimmage, and we're running the ball right at Devin White. That's what teams will do, but they can't do it if you will uh, use his head and, um, and, and let him call some stunts for the line because once one of those big guys gets in the backfield, let's say hits the court, hits the running back, and he could even cause a fumble or something because of it, then you slow down the offensive line. They're not going to be flying out, you know, to to uh to really run at him as hard. And and that's the way you protect a uh an undersized linebacker. Gary, do you think the starting linebackers are on the roster now? I uh <laughs> I I definitely I, I think White is gonna start. Uh we'll see how healthy uh, Dean is. But uh, you know, White. You know, even though he, you know, but whatever happened down there last year, he was on the team, won the Super Bowl. He was. And, and the defense, and was second team all pro. And that defense was they were they were strong. I mean, and in fact, they played great in the Super Bowl, but they, they had an outstanding year. So he's a guy I think you can win with. But of course, you got to know his weaknesses. You know, you know, he he uh he can't deal with letting somebody just blow off and run the ball right at him. So you got to, you got to make some changes there. But uh, the big thing is he's capable of making big plays for you. I know he's been in the league a while. So he, 
He knows how to play NFL football with his mind. So I, I think he could come here, and I think he could be a plus. But you got to use him the right way. When you look at the draft coming up and you look at where they're going to go, do you think it's going to be heavy defense that they're going to go because – of what the tools that they need on that side of the ball. And Gary, well, like I, what I try to tell people is if you go into this draft, and I loved what somebody said in our show earlier, that if you get into the season and you're finding out that that player is not good enough and you don't have a plan, you're behind. Yeah. And you have to start looking in this draft, replacing Lane. You have to start looking at replacing Goddard. You have to start looking at depth at linebacker. And mm -hmm. let's let's be candid here. Your cornerbacks, because of the money this year, you're going to have to have a plan next year to move yeah. off of at least one of them, which yeah. is going to be a certainty. So how you draft down at 22 and how you draft with, you know, their draft picks are 22, 50, 53, 120, 161, 171. 172, they'll probably trade one of them, and 211. You don't know who the players' names are going to be there because you look at the board, you got to wait and see. But you have right. to address needs in future. So, I mean, somebody may look at it and go, we drafted an offensive lineman. Why would we do that? Well, Lane's got two years left. That's right. Is that how his approach will be going into this? Well, I, I think he will look at the player. Now, you know, a, um, they're going to try to get the best player – that's on the board when they when they try. I mean, when they um, when they have their choice, uh, when they step up to make the make the pick. But um, you know, there are clearly some places where they are going to need to replace people at the cornerback position. You know, these guys are getting up. Uh, I don't think that they go into the season trusting Bradbury. You know, they haven't de decided what they're going to do. Of course, if they let him go, that's that's dead money. So, hey, Gary, let me stop you there for one minute. Do you think Gardner Johnson benefits Slay more or Bradbury more being put back in that in that in that secondary? Probably Bradbury. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that um, he does have a skill where he's he's good at, at reading quarterbacks. You know, he's got a good feel that, and he's got a good foot feel for the ball, and he does a great job of playing the ball in the air. You know, I can see where, you know, he's like this, uh, you know, like a, a good outfielder. Where, where the time the ball is released, he has a feel for where it's going, you know. And so he's got a real good, you know, he's already showed us that. Uh, and, and he does something which they need more, which is he gets his hands on the ball, you know. He, he's, um, you know, if I were uh, the coordinator, as much as I could, I would give him the freedom to be able to read the quarterback because he's got a good feel for that, reading the quarterback's eyes. and. Um, and going and getting the getting the ball at its highest point, you know things like that. Um, Gardner Johnson, he's got he's got good skills with that. At times, you know, I, I would want him to tell you, look, man, don't be distracting, okay? You know, I mean, like have a good time and everything, but we don't need you, you know, distracting guys. We we don't need to do that where you where you go too far with stuff. But but I I, I like Gardner Johnson. I mean, I think he's a um, He's a good player, and he because he does that one thing, which is the key to winning games, turnovers. You know, they haven't gotten – man, come on. What's going on with the secondary? They only had three last year between Slay and Bradbury. And they're not even getting their hands on the ball. They, they play so scared, you know. And I, I don't see it, you know. It, and I, I know um, Fangio believes in that. You don't give up the big play and everything. But that's why I would I like the fact they went out and got Gardner Johnson. You at least got a guy in there who can play the ball in the air. He's got a good feel for for the ball, and he's got good instincts. You know, I, we, you know, we see that about him. He's got good instincts. I just want him to be, dude. Don't be distracting. You got some of these young guys, man. They they don't need to be listening to you and getting way. <laughs> Look, play solid football, consistent. You know, uh, but Gardner Johnson, he's. He's one of the better guys in the league when it comes to, like I said, reading the quarterback, having a feel for the ball in the air, and going and getting his hands on footballs. And uh, they need that. They need that desperately because they haven't had that uh, in the secondary since he left. Two last questions for you. 
Are you buying or selling the stock of Nolan Smith? Well, I, I think they're in a good place where they don't need him to um, to shine right away, you know. Um, but I, you know, I'm not I'm not all the way sold on because he's still, you know. I I think he, I think he's going to be a good player. I I, I think it. Um, because I think he, he can get some stuff. Gary, can a coordinator ready, but... make that much of a difference on a player's productivity? And this is where I'm going to bend a little bit because I okay. don't know because I don't see it yet. And yeah. I'll give you an example, and you tell me if you've ever felt this yourself in a scheme. Okay. Um, You remember Burt Grossman that played uh, defensive end? I even think he maybe played in Philly a little bit. Yeah. But when he was with the Chargers, he told me he was in a scheme his first two years. He had 10 sacks a year. They moved him to a 34. He was never the same guy after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And he said he got hurt after that. They put more pressure on me to two gap. Yeah. I was getting three sacks, four sacks. In the first two years, he had 12 and 11 in his first two years in the league. And he never duplicated it. And yep. he said, hey, man. You get into a situation where a particular scheme and a guy doesn't know how to use you, man, you can just You're fall right. into the abyss. Yeah, he's right. Have you ever felt like that before? Uh, and do, do you believe I, that I, that could be the difference here for him, Nolan Smith? I, I, th I think it, de it definitely could. Um, I can't say I, I, I had to make adjustments. I, I did go through that some because really at the beginning of my career, we played a 4-3. And really, I was playing over the tight end. So that's all I, I worked. I was over the tight end all the time. And when you're off the ball, it's a it's a different game. You're, you're playing a completely different position. And I didn't have to do that as much because most of the time, you know, teams were right handed. I played left outside linebacker. And most of the time that tight end was coming to to my sides. So it was a change when I had to play more off the ball that's a completely different linebacker position, you know, uh, because when I was playing over the tight end, basically you try to manhandle the tight end, you hold him up. Don't let him get out quick on a pass release. And you just want to beat his block and um, be tough over there. So they can't run on that uh, tight end side and everything teams, of course, used to try to uh, like to run on the tight end side. But when I think about, um, you know, whether, um, you know, they're going to be ready to make this adjustment, you know, whether the uh, the kid is going to be able to make adjustment. I tell you, I, you know, I can't say that I know because I see plays. I'm looking at him. One play, you know, you see the speed. He does have the pure speed. Other times you see him getting pushed around. So he better be over there in that weight room. <laughs> you know, that, either that thing. or bricks, either that Gary or bricks in your pocket. And, and, you know, the thing is, you don't know how kids is working. I mean, if he's not going to work out hard and get over there because he's got to get stronger. Because I see at times where, and you don't see this as much with Hassan, where the guy just throws him away, man, just like he's a like he's a leaf. Just, you know, the, the opposite tackle just toss him. Unless he gets stronger, he's, he's, he's not, he's not going to be able to get it done in this league. You know, these guys are too big and too strong, and he, he needs to get some strength and get some rocks in his pocket. He's not going to get but so heavy, but that's why he's got to be strong. And he really needs to ask Hassan, hey, everything he did, and he needs to be doing it. If Hassan gets, a, let's say, a two-hour workout, he needs to work four hours, you yeah. know. Because, uh, But you don't know whether a kid is going to do that. Some of them come in and go through the motions, but hopefully, you know, because he was down there in Georgia, he has seen people work, and hopefully he knows how to work. That's what it's going to come down with him. Absolutely. Uh, Gary, I can't see that I'm, uh, you know, of course, he hasn't shown it yet. No, he has not shown it yet. We shall see. Big year for him. Gary, thank you so much for finding time. Know you swamped during this time, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, have, have a good one and uh, go birds. Hey, there you go, man. <laughs> Gary Cobb. Hey, thank you so much. Black for forget That's right. That's it. Fox 29, too. You can catch him, man. Really appreciate that. By the way, let's catch up with James's super chats here because I don't want to go uh, Xander into a timeout without reading James's super chats. If we can love Reddick, but same analyst Philly film room, 
surprised me showing sweat rushed against significantly harder tackle talent. Three to four Hall of Famers, almost all top 35, um, whereas Reddick faced one top tackle only. Huff facts worse too. How about this one too, James? It's a great take because Sweat is always on the strong side. Sweat took on the best players. Sweat played against two-time Trent Williams, two-time Ty- Tyron Smith, both going to the Hall of Fame, two best pass blockers, Dawkins number 20, Worth number five, Thomas number nine, Leno and times two, number 19, Reddick only faced one pro bowler, O'Neal, number 25. Huff was similar to Reddick, but Reddick's proven. These are all great takes, James. That's exactly correct. Hassan Reddick takes on the lesser talented people, but he gets home. He gets home. Josh Sweat is the best three-down lineman the Eagles have. He is the best. There is, there's no getting around that, okay? And, and, and you hear people go, well, he, he doesn't show up. Well, fuck, he plays against Trent Williams. How many people do show up? There's a reason he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. People get blocked. And I wouldn't say Sweat's a Hall of Fame player. Milton Williams, okay? Dean is great against, Dean is not great against the run. He stinks. He's not good against the run. He's got a ton of false steps. Dude, N'Kobe Dean has not shown that he's good at anything yet. Except being in the tub. That is so not true. Okay, Dean has not showed the ability for anything. By the way, Philly 500 will show, will jump aboard with us at 5.30 Eastern. Go watch film. How much film does he have in his career so far? He's going on his third year, and you have less than 200 plays that he's played in his career. What film are you watching? of N'Kobe Dean. When the two tackles in front of him were playing good, I guarantee if you put Dean on that field in the back end of that season, he got destroyed. He is not a good football player. He's a really good college player. We literally had the number one run defense. This guy's telling you half the story, Daz. And you ended up with one of the worst in the league. You gave up 145, went to trash. This guy thinks, Daz, that the Philly defense went to trash because they lost N'Kobe Dean. First year starting, Haas, you're blinded. He sucks. He's not as good as Kaiser White. You couldn't replace Kaiser White. Tape don't lie, buddy. I know it don't. You're not watching correctly. How many false steps did you see in the New England game? Four? And I said it. I predicted he would never last. And he would finish the season on IR. Dude, he's a schwimp. Your kicker. What's his name? Josh Norman. Is that it? Or Ezekiel El- What's his name? Josh Elliott? Zeke Elliott? He's bigger and has bigger shoes than what N'Kobe... N'Kobe Dean wears size 5. Okay? The Wicked Witch of the West had size 5 heels. Jake Elliott. Thanks. Sorry. I don't know my kickers. By the way, this new kickoff thing that the league's doing, I mean, the NFL is so fabulous. They'll never get rid of the kickoff or the extra point because that's when the cash register dings. That's when you take a commercial timeout. Come on, man. That high impact. Since when does the league care about player injuries? 
Look at look at LJ. Sills, Vegas has our uh over under 10 and a half. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Good luck to you. Good luck. Especially with your shitty defense. Good luck. I don't see it. You ain't winning game one against Cleveland. I'm taking the Browns in that game. You are not winning that game against Cleveland. Sao Paulo. <laughs> You're not winning that game. Sao Paulo. Shit. I say the best odds are week 10. That's what Sirianni's fired. Yep, only team with a higher total. That's Kansas City. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, man. 